<laughs> you know, I tell you what, if I could hunt every month of the year, I would. Obviously, we've got a lot of opportunities in the fall through the winter. We've got turkeys in the spring. We've got snow geese in the spring. But I tell you what, one of my favorite late spring, early summer opportunities is spring bear hunting. I love going up to Canada. Now that we can go back up to Canada, bear hunting is something I'm excited about. And so I've been practicing my bow. And the neat thing about this, where we're going up to Cranberry Lake, which we're staying at Viking Lodge and it's just all kinds of water, all kinds of great fishing. So we're gonna go up there, we're gonna hunt bears every night, we're gonna fish during the day, long days this time of the year. If you love the outdoors, love to hunt and fish, I mean, it's just overload. Daylight for 20 hours a day, it doesn't get any better. I love bow hunting, I love sitting in the woods, I love sitting in a tree stand. I just find bears fascinating. I love watching them and uh, if you're a hunter living in Minnesota or Wisconsin, you, you can apply for you know, your resident bear tags and, and in some areas, you know, those can be really difficult to get. You, know, you might be waiting you know, a handful of years before you ever draw a tag. And I think what is so appealing for so many hunters about coming up here is that you can get a tag from an outfitter every year. You don't have to wait for drawing a tag. It's something that you could do short notice if you had to, if the, if the outfitter has openings. But you can come up here and do this every year. And it's kind of an exotic experience. You know, for myself coming from North Dakota, we don't have a bear season, right? And so you look at, you know, a lot of people, they might cut their teeth hunting whitetails in the upper Midwest. And then you hunt whitetails a little bit and, you know, maybe you want to try something a little different. Maybe you want to try to hunt antelope or mule deer or elk out west or, you know, hunting black bears. And so for a lot of bow hunters, you know, you, you start out hunting whitetails and then you, you get hooked on that and then you want to try some different things, you know. And bear hunting is just one of those next steps that's so attainable. This is a very affordable hunt. I mean, this is something that most people can come up and do and it's not that far. I mean, good hard days drive and you're here. And for a lot of people, you know, it's just, it's just something that's different, something that's maybe a little bit exotic, you know, compared to the normal hunting opportunities that you might have close to home. Check our trail camera, see what came in last night. Here's some extra, extra incentive to keep the bears away from your cameras. Pretty simple design, piece of plywood and a bunch of four or five inch screws keeps them from keeps them from wrecking my cameras every year extra protection well you get in certain terrain types where you've got flat elevation not a lot of change in elevation and really heavy dense woods and brush where you just can't see you know you're not going to spot and stalk any bears up here and the other thing is that you want to really target the boars okay you don't want to shoot sows with cubs for example because the cubs have lower chance of survival you also want to shoot the bear in the perfect place the fat that they have and the way their hair absorbs the blood you can make a very good shot on a bear and and have a hard time tracking it it's just the way bears are okay and so you want to have a bear close you want to have the perfect angle the perfect shot so you can recover that bear that's why baiting is so important and so crucial in so many states and provinces it enables you to actually manage these bears and harvest bears in a clean ethical way where you can make good shots you can choose the right sex the right age you can study the bear get it close and so there's nothing unethical about hunting bears over bait baiting is something that man has used for a long time to try to lure and kill animals it's effective it's ethical and in a lot of places it's probably the only realistic way that you have to consistently try to harvest a bear. So we offer a spring and fall black bear hunt here at Viking Lodge. Um, we have several thousand acres allocated to us as an outfitter with uh, extremely good bear population with uh, very good opportunities for color phase bears and trophy bears. So with our bear hunts, we try and incorporate our bear hunts with our fishing season. So we will uh, we'll start our baiting roughly two to three weeks before we start our bear hunts to make sure that we're getting good activity consistently. And so then when we do start our bear hunts, that is typically the start of our fishing season as well. So most of our hunters like that opportunity that they can fish as well as spend the evenings 
uh, in a tree stand bear hunting. And so we have very long daylight hours in the spring, which gives us that opportunity to take advantage of, of those long days. We got out to the blind here, got it set up about, oh, probably about three o'clock. It's a little after seven. The woods have been quiet. It's just been pouring rain, really windy. I'm not sure if these bears will move in this wind. Whenever I've been up here before, really windy nights, it was pretty quiet, but all you need is one to walk by, so we're out here. But it is a soaker of a rain. So I told you that I love archery hunting. <laughs> you know what, I also love to fish. And so this is like the ultimate cast and blast trip in my mind. I mean, you think, okay, where can I cast and blast? What are some highlights, right? Maybe going down to South Dakota and pheasant hunting and walleye fishing on the Missouri River or Devil's Lake, North Dakota, walleye fishing and waterfall hunting. I mean, there's some different things that kind of bundle up together really nice. And then I think about this up here, coming up to Northern Manitoba, Viking Lodge, bear hunting every night fishing some of the best fishing water on the planet during the day. I mean, that's why we're here. That's why we drove by a few bears to get here is just the fishing, you know? And goodness, you look at Northern Manitoba, there's a lot of good fishing. You know, we've, we've been to a lot of different places where it's tremendous fishing, but this area between the Paws and Flim Flon, you look at the amount of water and just the variety. It's some of the best lake trout fishing you're gonna find and some of the best walleye fishing and some of the best pike fishing. And there's really, opportunities you can catch numbers of fish in place you can also catch or target big fish you know and so to come out here and you know one of the things that uh, I did this trip that made it special was I brought my oldest son Brennan with as well and so you know during the day when we go out fishing you know Brennan would hop in the boat with us in and just wear fish out I mean you catch so many fish there's times where my hands are so cut up I was worried that you know I wouldn't be able to draw my bow back. I mean, it's just crazy how good the fishing is. You know, and days are long enough where you can put in a good day of fishing. You could have a shore lunch if you want. You know, we ate a lot of fish while we're up here. And then every night, you know, four or five o'clock, you know, go out and, and, and bear hunt. And so it really is set up. It's just kind of the ultimate outdoor adventure if you love to hunt and fish. If you like to do both, this is a place to come. So all the fish we've caught up here, what's been your favorite? Do you like the pike and the lake trout or the walleyes the best? Probably lake trout. Lake trout? Yeah. yeah. Were they everything that I talked them up to be? Yeah. <laughs> I've been talking about lake trout all spring, talking about how fun they are. I hoped that we'd be able to fish for them on this trip. But at the end of the day, I'd rather eat a walleye than a lake trout. And so that's what we're doing here is we're trying to get some groceries. Look at how strong these fish are. I think these fish have such a short growing season that they just, all they do is eat. It's a good eater. And that, Brennan, we're gonna eat that one. That's shore lunch there. What do you think of that? Dinner? Oh yeah. Dinner is served. There you go. Keep that rod up high. I'm gonna hit spot lock here. Is that a dinner fish? We gotta eat here. Can't I hope go so. Can't go hungry at bear camp. Oh yeah, nice wall. Go ahead and lift her right in. Perfect eater. Nice. There you go. Nice work. Now we're eating good. Oh, watch out for those hooks. Well, that will be a perfect dinner. We got enough for dinner. We can eat fish, hunt bears. Pretty good living.
you know, so we had some bad luck with the weather. You know, there's no way to, no way to circumvent that. You can't control that. Sometimes you just have to wait through it. So, you know, we waited through some windy days and some rainy days where the woods are really quiet. We didn't see anything. And we finally got a break in the weather. We got a nice day and it felt good. It felt right. And sure enough, you know, probably two hours before dark, you know, see a bear. It's getting dark. Oh, it's pretty prime time. We had a few encounters, a few nice ones, and we hope that one of them will come back so I can get a clear shot at it. You know, what's cool about bear hunting is that every bear has a different personality, <laughs> you know, and it's just fun watching them. And so, you know, they come into the bait sites, you know, some of them will circle, some of them will, you know, they'll have a preference for different things that are at the bait site, you know, and. And it's just, it's just fun watching them, you know? And, and what's also interesting is just how, how reckless some bears can be where other bears are really, really skittish. You know, we've had some bears that would just, they wouldn't come into the bait. It's like they knew something was up. They would just sit there 50, 175 yards off into the bush, you know, almost like they're waiting for it to get dark, waiting for us to leave so that then they can come into the bait site. Or we've had other bears that would circle downwind and then as soon as they caught a, you know, scent checked and as soon as they caught a whiff of us as hunters, they're gone, you know, and, and other bears just, you know, they're just reckless. And so every bear has got a different personality, but I enjoy just watching you know, how these bears interact with each other and how they approach the bait and, and they're just a fascinating animal. When we start our hunting, we're, we're in what we'd, we call the pre-rut for bears. And uh, typically the bears will start to rut uh, around the beginning of June into the second week of June. So we're starting to see those bears, they come in, they're hungry. They're coming out of hibernation and uh, they're hungry. So we're, we're getting them into the baits on pre-rut. They're not thinking about rut yet. They're just wanting to eat. As our season goes forward, then we start to get into the rut and then you start seeing these bigger boars roaming. And so we like to take advantage of that and, and be out there you're gonna have weather affect your hunt. And so when, like this spring, we had um, a lot of winds, um, a lot of moisture, about the second week of our season. And so it does affect the bear hunt. We, we noticed a lot of our bears went nocturnal on us. So they're coming into the baits at night rather than during daylight. And so there's, uh, we tried different tactics to try and change that and steer them back to daylight hours if we can. Um, different lures that we'll use. Um, I mentioned beavers is one, they love beavers. So if they know there's fresh beaver on the site during daylight, that might draw them in. We do whatever we can to try and make that set hunt successful for the hunter.
lot better. The wind finally laid down. The rain quit and it's just still out here. It just feels like a night where things should start moving here, so we'll see. There's been a really nice brown face bear that's been coming to this site here, so hopefully he moves tonight. wait and then it happens. Wow. <laughs> Everything felt good when I shot and obviously it's always great when you shoot an animal especially with a bull where you shoot the animal, you, you, animal runs off 50 yards, you hear the animal crash, you know you know that the animal's down you know or you see the animal go down you know, this is a deal where these woods are so thick, this brush is so thick that once these bears get away from the bait, you can't see anything. You know, we get down and the, we find the arrow, there's blood up and down the arrow, that looks good. There's a fair amount of blood near where the bear was shot. And then it's almost like just the leaves that were wet from all the rain that we had previously. It's just like the woods just absorbed the blood where we just could not find any blood. And then you start to doubt yourself, well, if there's no blood, was the shot not as good as I thought it was? You know, there's a lot of things that go through your mind. But if there ever is a question in your mind, you know, there's kind of the old adage, the old rule of waiting and backing out, waiting, giving it time, and then going in where you don't push the animal. And so, beautiful thing is, is it's probably about midnight when we're wrapping up. Good news is it's daylight at four o'clock. And so it's not that long, because the other thing I'm worried about is the meat spoiling. I shot this bear to eat it. I definitely don't want to lose the meat. And so we got up early, went out the next morning, and uh, again, during daylight, we don't find any blood either. And so it's kind of the old, found it the old-fashioned way, persistence, walking in a grid and not giving up. And sure enough, you know, we looked and looked and looked, walked back and forth. We finally found this bear. It only gone maybe 50 yards. It had been, it was dead right away, but for whatever reason, bear just didn't bleed. Went right through the lungs. Great shot, you know, and uh, you know we had the recovery, and so that was a just a sigh of relief finding that bear right away because the longer it goes, the more you doubt everything, the more you second guess everything. All right, I can't believe it. We found it. Someone's just got to be persistent, huh? All right. Oh yeah, great, great bear. Oh yeah. Oh, we, we, we got, got it on. <laughs> we a, found it. Well, you know, it's, when you go to bed at night and you haven't f recovered an animal, that's always the worst feeling. But uh, goodness, we probably only slept for maybe four hours. It's daylight again, and I'm so glad we found it right away because I like eating bear. You know, I mean, they're such a great eating animal. And, great tasting. And uh, goodness, this bear didn't go very far, but just how wet the ground was, how wet the leaves were, we just could not find any blood in the dark. And yeah, just a. Kind of a brown phase, I guess. It's not pure black, but just a beautiful you know, bear. Still has his thick winter coat. Yeah. Yeah, and I've shot quite a few black ones, so this one here's a little different. That's what I love about bear hunting. Everyone's unique. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think what you sets always... you guys apart, too, is obviously you have great bear hunting, lots of bears, and some of the best fishing around. Yeah. So when you have 20 hours of daylight, <laughs> you don't want to waste time. No, exactly. <laughs> you want to be out there. You want to enjoy the outdoors and... Yeah, what a what a special place. Well, thank you, sir. Thank it was a, you very such much. A, pleasure. Such a great me. trip up here. We'll be back. <laughs>